Hey, good morning everybody, it's Brian. Hope you're doing well. It is Wednesday, 1st of July. Can you believe it? <laughs> I know I always say that, but a new month. Oh my God, I can't believe it's a new month. It's crazy though, I think this year, this half year has just flown by. Maybe part of it's because we've been locked indoors. Uh, it's definitely you know frustrating where we are right now. This, uh, for a lot of you that have known me for years, this is normally the time that my family and I are gone, and uh, we we typically travel for the summer, and uh, we we haven't even left the greater Dallas Fort Worth area <laughs> lately. So it's like ah. Anyway, um, what, what's going on in the market today? What what are we looking at? What are we seeing? What um, what sort of potential trade ideas do we have out there? so on and so forth. So let's um, let's jump into it. I'm just moving my screen around over here for some reason. For some reason, some stuff is missing. Uh, a little late getting into the setup this morning. I was in the middle of a chat session with someone else. Okay, here we go. All right, let's see what's going on. Let's uh, let's pull up the, we're gonna start over here in the, the Forex market, head over to futures and then into the, the crypto side of things. Uh, before we do that though, it is important to point out that we do have some high impact news coming up today. We have the ADP non-farm employment report, which is the precursor to the official non-farm payroll report, which comes out tomorrow. Um, You know, we we talk about markets need a need a catalyst. This can be could potentially be a catalyst for uh, for for what's going on right now. Uh, definitely, we don't want to try to front run it. Um, I also don't uh, anymore watch the report and then try to determine the market bias off the report. Uh, years and years ago, I used to look at all the high impact reports as they came out and try to make decisions around that. Uh, Life got a lot less stressful when I stopped worrying about what the report said and, and what that might, what that potential impact might be to the markets, and just watch the chart, let the chart do it, you know, let the market do what the market's going to do, and then apply a trading method back to that chart. Uh, it, I say less stressful because when you look at it reports as they come out and you see the numbers presented on the screen and you know they're either green or they're red or there's a, a big delta from what the expectation was or whatever it might be we form these biases and we go wow that should be really good for this you know this instrument or that should be really bad for this and you know we start getting these biases in our mind and then when the market isn't performing that way we start getting frustrated and we're like well it's got to turn it's got to come back to this and as I said before, no one knows what the market's going to do. The market's going to do what the market's going to do. And, you know, it just becomes less frustrating when you have a, a, a plan and you have a system and you let, as I talked about before, the filters, all your indicators that you put on your charts are filters. Let those filters do their work. Let the, let the filters sit there and, and the, you know, the, the market data is coming in. And the filters are sitting here and, and, and whatever seeps through the bottom of that filter system should be your trade. And if nothing comes through the filter, then you don't take a trade. And uh, that's what we should really focus on doing is focus on the process. The more we can be consistent with our process, look for specific setups and wait for those setups to occur, the less stressful things are going to be. We can breathe easy. We can you know, understand that we're going to have some losses here and there. Understand that we're going to have you know a series of wins, but overall we can breathe easy in the marketplace because we have a plan. Typically, when we've got a plan, we've got a system, we've got a process. Everything just feels right. Everything just feels better that way. So anyway, uh, without going off a, a whole lot about that, just remember news coming up. Uh, that news is actually in about five minutes. The the ADP report is going to come out. Also, it's a Canadian bank holiday, so if you're trading forex, Canadian cross pairs. It's going to be less heavily traded. Uh, the CAD's going to be less heavily traded. So, you know, good data. Even though the CAD obviously is moving because it's being traded here in the U.S. and it's being traded on other exchanges as well, their, you know, entire economy is closed. So, uh, you know, due to a holiday, a bank holiday. So 
they're not trading, so the, the volume on the cat's going to be down. So be, uh, be, be aware of that. So um, what are we looking at from a Forex perspective? Well, really, at this point, nothing, because you want to wait until after this red news. High impact US news uh, can impact the entire market here. So we're really not going to do anything until after this news comes out. And then we'll start looking to see what opportunities do we have. Once the news has hit, you know, and the market chops around doing what it's going to do for, you know, a minute or two, as we see spreads kind of return to normal across all the market, you know, all the different, all the different pairs, as things kind of return to normal and we get an idea of what might be being, what might be, <laughs> <laughs> we get all tongue tied. What, what are my words? Uh, we get an idea of which currencies are actually moving, which currencies are, are being heavily bought, and which currencies are being heavily sold off. We'll be able to see that divergence on our on our uh, currency strength and our currency strength meter here, and then we'll be able to make a uh, make a decision about what we might like to pair together. Just remember today, you know, we don't want to pair with the Canadian necessarily because again it's going to be lighter volume that's going to create potentially more volatility and, and, and certainly could create more chop so if you have larger orders coming in uh, on, on, a, on a smaller order book those orders are going to be consumed more rapidly causing price to move more drastically up or down right so so long and short of that is be patient let the news happen come in after the news occurs and the market returns to normal <laughs> if, if there is a normal anymore and uh, see where it goes from there. Uh, over on the uh, future side of things, we're seeing a bit of a sell-off this morning uh, coming into that report. Uh, so looking at the S&P, uh, selling off a little bit from the gains it had yesterday, uh, really just uh, pushed higher uh, yesterday following uh, Mr. Powell's testimony. And uh, we, we touched 3,100 up here, which is a, another key level for us up here on the on the higher side on on the four hour, you know, we can see. I don't have it marked, but I always talk about the whole numbers anyway. You know, uh, 3100 certainly is a, a big level for us. We saw it hit that and repel off of it. Uh, it'll be interesting. We're we're now we've we've pulled back down here to this uh, 31 six or 31 30 65 area, and we're seeing it struggle a bit. That's on, again on a four hour a big resi a big uh, support level for us. So. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, <clears throat> you know, post news, and then of course as the regular trading session gets underway uh, here in, in about an hour and 15 minutes to see what actually comes of this. What's the market going to do? Are we going to push higher coming into the holiday weekend, or uh, you know, are we going to stay in a range? Are we going to start uh, seeing this thing turn around and start pushing lower? Uh, again, no one knows. All we really do is is we have a a, a set of filters that we're applying to the market that give us an idea of what to do and for me right now we have a mixed bias if we look at the four hour we see you know the red lines above the green I mean, obviously we can see that we you know yesterday pushed pushed you know up quite a bit but I, I use you know two moving averages as a way to have a quantifiable look at the marketplace and when you know when when my short term crosses above my, my longer term moving average, that's a that's something that's definitive. You know, it's not subjective at all. That's that's a quantifiable measure. It crossed, therefore I can say this is this is now changed. Um, you know and, and I look for that agreement between between the long and between the four hour and the thirty minute. These two are mixed. So in the on the four hour Technically, we're still in a law in a in a short bias, and on the 30-minute, we're in a long bias. Uh, however, you know, we we need to, to see what actually happens with the uh, market here in a bit. See what happens after the news and after the regular session begins. You know, if the 30-minute begins, you know, really pushing lower as it has here and, and crosses down below this 3050 area, uh, we may be able to see the 30-minute um, change and become a short bias as well. I want to see agreement before I'm able to say what direction I'd want to trade for the day. If I don't see agreement uh, between the four hour and the 30 minute, then I, and that's a day that you sit on your hands for that specific instrument. So that's where we are right now. Today is the day that we're going to sit on our hands until uh, we see some level of agreement between the, uh, 
the 30-minute the bias and the four-hour bias. Now you can look at that any way you want to. Um, I'm showing you what what I'm I'm looking at. I use moving averages. Other people might just put a, a 50, uh, you know, a 50 simple moving average and say if price is above the 50 SMA, it's long, and if it's below the 50 SMA, it's short. And look at that on multiple time frames and do the comparison. Um, that might get you into trades a little bit faster, uh, you know, because you've got a little shorter time frame here and you're looking at something more definitive around you know the directionality. Uh, this works for me. You know, it keeps me out of things. I don't mind waiting a couple of days if um, you know the market's flipping around and trying to de determine a new direction I don't mind waiting I don't it, it's okay to, to not be in a trade in an instrument every single day of the week some people want to be a little faster than that you want to have more trading opportunities uh, so there's different ways to look at it it doesn't matter what you look at as long as you're consistent with how you measure it and how you look at it and how you execute it uh, there is no right answer. I, I say it all the time. There is no right answer. The right answer is do what you're going to be able to do consistently. That's what gives you that the, the long-term advantage and the results, right? Do what you're going to be able to do consistently. So if it's putting a shorter-term uh, moving average on there and measuring that on, on different time frames, fine. That, that, that's what floats your boat. Go for it, you know? If you're looking at um, the relative strength index, you know, put an RSI indicator on there and and make decisions around that. I mean, there, there's so many ways to look at the market. Um, it just really comes down to finding something simple that's also quantifiable that gives you a, a, a kind of a, that decision process of, of these things have happened. You know, my filter's on the market, something seeped through the filter, now I can take a trade. The filter's kind of irrelevant. It's more of just to, to, to give you that, that that process point, so you've got a consistent way of approaching the market. All right, um, what's up next? Uh, crude. So for so for the S and P, the the my end goal on this is I don't have any specific trading recommendation right now. I don't. I mean, we're we've got a mixed bias. So for me, on the S and P, we're we're sitting on our hands until bias is aligned on the four hour and the thirty minute. So there, there we have it. Uh, I'm not even going to get into counter trend stuff. Um, other, other, you know, obviously you can see support resistance areas over here, you know, at 3088, 3090, and, uh, you know, 3065 areas. But beyond that, I mean, I, I, I'd wait for, the, wait for the biases to align. Uh, over on crude, you know, over here in crude, it's, uh, <laughs> this morning looks like it's coming off a cliff right now. So, uh, you know, we're still in a long bias though. If we look at the, the four hour and the 30 minute, uh, both of these have a have a long bias. However, I don't know if I'd want to step in front of this train <laughs> right, right right here. Looks like a lot of momentum on that on that push down right now. Of course, we are pulling back to 3,900. 3,900 big key area for us, whole numbers, right? 3,900 has been uh, definitely a level of uh, what was, you know, first resistance. And then we saw it supported quite a bit. Resistance again, support. Again, and right now it would be listed as support level as well. So pulling back to 3,900, you know, could certainly be a buying opportunity if you're, you know, if you're looking to buy pullbacks like that. Uh, right now, both of these are in agreement. We are long, so looking at 3,900 is a potential buying area. Uh, you know, you might look back up here if it cracks above 40, that might be your opportunity to buy if you're looking for a, a top level breakout uh, or. You could also, you know, just simply trail it and look at, uh, like at this point right now, we've been making lower highs and lower lows. So in an upward trend for making lower highs and lower lows, we could uh, plant a, a stop, a, a, a buy order at the top of that previously closed lower high. And if it breaks through that, that could be our signal to enter. So there's a couple of different ways to, to, to come at it. Uh, but definitely, you know, watch for this momentum. If this momentum shift uh, keeps, you know, keeps pushing down, and this 30-minute eventually crosses over, um, that that would be the opportunity to be out. Um, also, as I mentioned earlier in the week, it's a short week. It's a holiday week, and you know, we are in a holiday week like this, a short week like this. We're going to see volume being down. There's not as you, you see bigger players, you know, taking some time off and stepping out of the market, and it's uh, certainly. You know, if, if, if the current volatility is, is, quote, you know, too rich 
for your blood is a kind of a gambling term, right? Is that too rich for your blood? Uh, it, it's okay to be out. Just don't trade today. Don't trade tomorrow. Come back, you know, when when things are back under, you know, kind of a regular trading week after the holiday weekend. Again, it's, it's okay not to trade. I'm giving you permission. It's okay not to trade. Um, it, it's a hard thing to do because as traders, we often identify it, uh, as pushing the button. I've got to push the button in order to be a trader. I have to be, you know, clicking this and taking action, doing all these things. You don't have to be active. I mean, the active, the activity in trading is is watching the market, making a decision around your trading plan. That's that's the activity in trading, and and it should be focused on that process, not anything else. Uh, over on gold, looking at gold. So for for crude, you know, a couple of ideas here. You know, pullbacks at thirty nine hundred to buy. You know, buy if you're looking to buy the pullback. Uh, if you're looking for top level, higher level breaks, breaking back above forty, or like I mentioned, as long as this is a, 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 a long bias on the 30 minute, you can trail this uh, previously closed lower high down and uh, park, a, park a, a, a pending buy order at the top of that previously closed candle. And, and you might even consider doing that on a lower time frame just so that you can limit your risk a little bit more. All right, gold. What's happening over here in gold? Um, over in gold, we've got. Um, you know, our, our four hour bias and our 30 minute bias both are long. So we do have a long bias. It is seeing a bit of a sell off this morning and uh, price is moving, uh, certainly moving a lot lower. It's pulling back, you know, into this into this key level over here, which was that 1788, 1787 area, uh, which was kind of some tops we had made previously. So uh, might look at this as a, you know, potential buy area on a pullback. Uh, certainly, breaking back above 1795 uh, would be a, a breakout, you know, an upper level breakout if it's uh, if we're going long from here, um, or even if it pulls back to 1780 would be a good spot to look for uh, potential buying opportunities. We'll see what gold continues to do. Um, I'd wait, you know, obviously on any of these, I'd, I'd wait, you know, at least about an hour, uh, excuse me, so that we're. Um, under regular trading hours, I mean, crude and gold not quite the same as the S and P, right? And the S and P is going to come on uh, regular trading hours at 8:30. But I, I see volume increase on all of these around that time. I'd rather trade during times of higher volume. So for right now, uh, might I, you know, just just let your trading day begin at a very specific time, whatever that is for you. For me, the trading day begins at 8:30 my time, which is 9:30 Eastern. Uh, so what everything everything that happens up to that point. I'm just waiting to see if we get you know potential setup. So um, you know same thing as we saw in crude for gold, which is you know looking at these pullbacks. You know, we've got 1787 uh, down to about 1780 as uh, potential buy opportunities. If you're looking to buy on a on a bounce, you know pulling back to a key level and buying on a bounce, we've got 1795, uh, which is a, a four hour key level on the four hour. If we break back above that. Looking to buy on a on a on a break above 1795, or of course you know continue to ratchet down as we make lower highs and lower lows. Continue to ratchet the uh, pending entry down, the pending buy order down on the on the top of that previously closed uh, lower high, and see if we break out from there. So a couple different ways to look at it. Of course, as always, you know manage your risk. You, you've got to look at where you're going to place your stop loss. Uh, I recommend doing that on something that's based on the instrument that you're trading, not just taking some static number and, and throwing it out there. You know, look at it, look at, at, at the range of movement for that instrument, and what's the average trade range on that on that um, time frame that you're trading, and then use that as your measure for the, the initial stop loss. And then keep that you know one or two percent. Don't don't go crazy. Uh, with your with your risk, you've got, you've got to live the trade another day. You know when when losses occur. So uh, that's that's gold. So we talked about gold. We've hit the S and P mixed bias. Crude and gold are both long for right now. We'll see how that stacks up once you know we get into the the trade time. If I take trades on it, obviously I will um, let you know. Especially if we take trades for the small account challenge, we'll keep posting those in here as we have. Uh, last thing over on the um, crypto side of things, Bitcoin. Oops, 
Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum both are still in short bias. Uh, these have, have pulled back, and we talked about it yesterday. Uh, we're, we're in a short bias. If we pull back to key levels, uh, we, we look for those levels to sell off of. Uh, if you're in an accumulation strategy, you'd just be flat right now. Uh, or you know, you've got your if you're accumulating, you've just got your you've got your tokens, you've got your coins, and and you're waiting for a new area to buy from. Uh, so if you're in a, just a long strategy, you'd be waiting for this to cross over to give you that signal to buy again. But for right now, uh, we're, we're looking at selling opportunities. So we'd be looking to these key levels, this you know, uh, 230 here that pulls back to be able to sell off of that. Uh, if it breaks down below uh, you know, about 220, uh, we'd be looking to, to sell there as well as, as you know, if you're looking for a breakout. You could probably even go as high as 224 if it breaks below that, looking to sell off of that. Uh, Bitcoin, same thing, short bias. So we'd be, you know, looking at pullbacks to this, you know, 9170, 9200. 90, uh, if it pulls back, you could be looking to sell that bounce, or we could be looking at breakouts down below, you know, 9075 area, 90, even 9100 as uh, potential shorts. If it breaks through, looking to continue down. And I think if the you know, it, it's funny if the bottom falls out of the S and P. It's very possible that we'll see uh, money flowing out of out of crypto as well. Uh, it, it's weird; things have kind of hit this disjointed area. You know, typically gold is flowing kind of inverse to the S and P. It hasn't done that in a while. It's been tracking with it. Um, yeah, I, same with crypto. Crypto used to kind of follow gold. <laughs> And uh, even that's been trading different. So there's just a weird, it's a really weird kind of market dynamic right now. And I, more than ever, I think it's just highlights the fact that it's so important to have a plan. Whatever that plan is, I'm, I'm not saying that my plan is the perfect plan. Uh, there's, there's a million ways to, to come at the market. You've got to find the one that works best for you. Uh, I'd say simplify it as, you know, the, Make it the most simple plan that you can. I, I think this plan that I use is, is pretty darn simple. You know, looking at, at key levels, looking for uh, bias on a four-hour and a thirty-minute, just you know, trading in the direction of that trend of that of that bias. It keeps it simple, all right. But um, not to say that that's quote the best. It's the best for me. It may not be the best for you. You might want to look at different filters. So apply whatever filters you you, you feel like to the marketplace, and then utilize that. Really the rubber meets the road at money management. That's that's where it all comes together, quite honestly. You know, having keeping your risk low and then giving yourself the opportunity to win two to three times what you lose and and it all works out mathematically after that. So um, I, that's it. That's it for the day. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it here. Uh, if I if I have any trades that we take in the in the account that we've been tracking here, I'll post them up. If I don't We'll come back tomorrow and see what uh, what the what the day brings. Following, um, you know, tomorrow's the official non-farm employment report and unemployment claims report. So, uh, if today's report didn't have you know much of an impact on the market, tomorrow's certainly may. Um, either way, that was a broken record. Have a plan. Stick to the plan. Have a plan. Stick to the plan. That's. That's it. That's the secret sauce for trading. All right. Have a great day. Bye.